The USPSPF has now upgraded its recommendation to a grade C from a previous grade of D. The grade D recommendations remain in place for men over 70 years old. This represents a major switch from discouraging PSA based screening grade D, grade D to offering screening to selected patients depending on individual circumstances. A combination of systematic, uh, systematic and opportunistic screening suggested over diagnosis and mortality reduction in the systematic screening groups compared to a higher over diagnosis with a marginal survival benefit at best in the opportunistic screening regime. The, the diagnostic tool by any biopsy was not associated with any mortality in the selected papers, which is in contrast with other known data. Increased diagnosis has historically led to overtreatment with associated side effects. However, despite this, the effect on the patient's overall quality of life is still unclear. At a population level, screening has never been shown to be detrimental. Never this all these findings have led to strong advice against systematic population based screening in most countries, including those in Europe. In case screening is contributed, a sing, considered a single PSA test is not enough based on the cluster randomized trial of PSA testing for prostate cancer trial. The CAPE trial evaluated a single PSA screening versus controls not undergoing PSA screening on PCA detection in men age 59 years of age. The single PSA screening intervention detected more low-risk prostate carcinoma cases but had no significant effect on prostate carcinoma mortality after a median follow-up of 10 years. Since 2013, the European Retinoid Study of Screening for Prostate Cancer data has been updated with 16 years of follow-up. The key message is that with extended follow-up, the mortality reduction remains unchanged. 21% and 29% after non-compliance adjustment. However, the number needed to screen and to treat is decreasing and is now below the number needed to screen or serve in breast cancer trials. Early detection. An individualized risk adopted strategy for early detection may still be associated with a substantial risk for overdiagnosis. It is essential to remember that breaking the link between diagnosis and active treatment is the only way to decrease over treatment while still maintaining the potential benefit of individual early diagnosis for men requesting it. Men at elevated risk of having prostatic carcinoma are those more than 50 years of age or are at age more than 45 years with a same history of prostatic carcinoma, either paternal or maternal or of African descent. In 2014, as for breast cancer, a genetic abnormality associated with increased risk is being shown so this. Jalal, you go back to the uh, previous slide. You see this statement um, which states that uh, it is essential to remember that breaking the link between diagnosis and active treatment is the only way to decrease over treatment while still maintaining the potential benefit of individual early diagnosis for men requesting it. If this uh, statement uh, is uh, something which is, um, which is taken as, um, as the guiding principle, then this is the same thing which you, you have been seeing uh, around you these days. Uh, what's happening with this uh, coronavirus uh, infection? Um, uh, we are still in the process uh, on country-to-country -country basis that what should be the strategy. Um, in the earlier part of this uh, pandemic, uh, this was the concept that um, this is nothing but a kind of a bad flu season, meaning to say that it is just like a flu and uh, it will go away. But now uh, there are certain countries who have, a strat who have devised a strategy of uh, doing active screening of their population and what they have done is they have screened the whole country uh, on a city-wide basis and that is uh, I can give you one example and that is Germany and uh, after doing screening on a massive scale they are of the opinion or they come to know of the actual situation that who are the people who are actually carrying the viral load so if the initial testing can give you for instance those people who are carrying the virus 
then you can again go on to the second stage which means that some of them would be symptomatic and some of them would be asymptomatic now if that is done then you go on to the third stage and that is if those who are positive and who are symptomatic can be put into for instance uh, uh, isolation so uh, this is the way that they they go from one point to the other point and that is the actual i think uh, the winning situation in most of the countries uh, in, who have adopted that's this kind of a strategy so uh, this is something which is in relation to to current situation but if we uh, for instance if if we again uh, read this line breaking the link between diagnosis of neck and treatment this is what is hap what should happen in any um, in any case uh, in any disease um, eradication uh, strategy pro uh, perhaps for instance if uh, the west has got a very high incidence of prostate cancer and this is um, like second in the whole list of uh, cancers after bronchogenic carcinoma then uh, they have got all the rights to propose some something which is on on a on a wider scale meaning to say on on a continent basis like uh, europeans are doing for europe and uh, maybe americans are doing for um, northern america so every um, organization or every association has got its own uh, uh, say background and they have they have got to address to their own problem since prostate cancer is not the number one cancer as such we presume it uh, again there is no study on a on a wider scale in in our part of the world but we presume that the number one cancer in our part of the world is perhaps bladder cancer and that is something which we experience in our one center that is siut also uh, but if uh, a prostate cancer is there somewhere hiding we can't know where it is it's the same situation like coronavirus it might be there but we don't know where it is since uh, no symptoms can just pinpoint that this is because of prostate cancer so either you have to look for it uh, and you you have to screen the whole population uh, that again because of um, economic constraints we can't do for prostate cancer we can't have uh, psa as a screening tool for our population so what we can at least do is we have got a clinic that is prostate clinic so anybody who comes to us with symptoms of low urinary tract uh, they come to this clinic and they happen to be like 50 years plus of age uh, what we do is we use psa as a screening tool for this kind of population who have got uh, low urinary tract symptoms so Uh, at least we can say that within our jurisdiction of the hospital in our urology department we have devised a strategy of screening almost everybody who comes to this uh, clinic with with these kind of symptoms so we are actually breaking this link between diagnosis and active treatment so we are not treating everybody for prostate cancer but we are actually looking for prostate cancer in the whole pool of uh, lower urinary tract symptom uh, patients um if you if i make myself clear then it would be very easy for you to understand the kind of situation the kind of um, um a fluid situation rather in which everything has to be changed according to the knowledge that is being gained for instance what we gain from our experience in the past 10 years maybe 20 years now we have to uh again readdress the same problem re-strategize our own process and that would be the way forward in managing any kind of a disease uh, it might be uh, a, a, a prostate cancer in this case it might be uh, for instance a stone disease uh, if we want to have something called preventive urology in in, in the context of a stone uh, treatment uh, so this is the this is the principle that has to be uh, there in everybody's mind that you have to break the link between diagnosis of nectar treatment yes please
when you get the events in which are having culture change, sir, uh, those more than 50 years are at age, more than 45 years, with the same history of prostate cancer, either paternal or maternal, or of the basic of legal descent. And 2040 is for breast cancer, a genetic infirmity is associated with an increased risk of being shown for the disease. Prostate specific antigen screening in male prior to two periods detected more significant cancer at a younger age compared to non mutation cancer. In addition, men with a PSA more than 1 nanogram per email at 40 years and more than 2 nanogram per email at 60 years of age are also at increased risk of prostate cancer metastasis or death from prostate cancer for several decades later. The long term survival and quality of life benefits of such an approach remains to be proven at the population level. The use of DRE alarm in the primary care setting had a sensitivity and specificity. Below 60 percent. Person will do any experience and can therefore not be committed to exclude prostate disorder. Informed men requesting an early diagnosis should be given a PSA test and undergo a DRE. The optimal interval for PSA testing and DRE follow up are unknown as they vary between several prospective types. A single PSA test in men between 50 and 69 years of age did not improve the near prostate cancer specific survival compared to standard care in a large randomized controlled trial in a primary care study. A risk adopted strategy might be a consideration based on the initial PSA level. This could be every two years for those initially at risk or postponed up to date to 10 years in those not at risk with initial PSA less than 1 nanogram per email at 40 years and a PSA less than 2 nanogram per email at 60 years of age and a negative family history. An analysis of PRSPC data supports the recommendation for an 8 year screening interval in men with initial PSA concentration less than 1 microgram per meter fewer than 1 percent of men. With an initial PSA concentration less than 1 microgram per meter were found to have a concentration in autobiography to show a 3 microgram per meter at 4 year follow-up. The cancer destruction rate by 8 years was close to 1 percent. Data from the good part of the EAR is trying to suggest that the age at which early diagnosis should be stopped and the solution. But an individual life expectancy must be definitely taken into account. Men who have less than a 15 year life expectancy are unlikely to benefit based on data from the prostate cancer intervention versus other patient trials and the ERFC trials. Furthermore, although there is no simple tool to evaluate individual life expectancy, comorbidity is at least as important as age. Multiple tools are now available to determine the need for a biopsy to establish the diagnosis of a prostate carcinoma, including imaging by MRI is available. New biological markers such as PMPR is excluded diffusion, PCA3 are catechrins as incorporated in the by our core case score test have been shown to add sensitivity and specificity on top of PSA, potentially dividing unnecessary biopsies and lowering over diagnosis. At this time, there is too limited data to implement these markers and the routine screening program. Guidelines for, for screening and early detection. The recommendation do not subject men to prostate specific antigen testing without considering them on the potential risk and benefit. Offer an individualized risk adopted strategy for early detection to a very informed men in the life expectancy of at least 10 to 15 years. Offer early PSA testing to very informed men at elevated risk of having prostate carcinoma. For the men more than 50 years of age and men with more than 45 years of age and having family history of prostate cancer. And men of a preterm descent who have uh, more than 45 years of age, and men carrying BRCA2 mutations who have again more than 40 years of age. Offer a risk adopted strategy based on initial PSA level with follow up intervals of 2 years for both initial year risk. Men with a PSA level of more than 1 nanogram per ml at 40 years of age, and those men with a PSA level of for more than 2 nanograms per ml who have uh, 60 years of age. 
with free by total PSL is still two point one zero, but it only eight percent with free by total PSA are more than two point two by nanogram per head. Free by total PSA is of no clinical use if the total serum PSA is more than ten nanograms per head or during part of a non fasted year. The clinical value of free by by total first state specific condition level is limited in the light of novel serum test. Urine test is every marker select MDS my prostate score. Prostate cancer G3 is a prostate specific non coding microRNA by marker that is detectable in urine sediments obtained after three strokes of prostatic massage during DIA. The commercially available progen size urine test for PCFE is superior to total and present free PSA for the detection of prostate cancer in men with elevated PSA at test it shows significant decreases in the area under the receiver operator characteristics of the positive biopsies. PCA3 score increases with PCA over the prostate cancer volume, but there are conflicting data about whether it independently predicts the IHPT grade. Currently, the main indication for the progen size is to determine whether the repeat biopsy is needed after an initially negative biopsy but its clinical effectiveness for this purpose is uncertain. The select MDX field test is similarly based on mRNA biomarker isolation for the The presence of part CX, uh, C6 and TLX1 mRNA levels is assessed to provide an estimate of the risk of both presence of prostate cancer and biopsy as well as presence of high risk cancer. TMPR is a TRG fusion, a fusion of the transmembrane protease serial 2 and the TRG gene can be detected in 50% of prostate carcinoma. When detective of TMPR is a 2 TRG in urine was added to PCA3 expression and serum PSA, prostate for cancer production improved. Exosomes secreted by cancer cells may contain mRNA diagnostic for high grade prostate cancer. Use of the uh, X2DX prostate and the spore urine exosome assay resulted in dividing 27% of unnecessary biopsies when compared to standard of care. However, currently both the MIPS score and the X2DX assays are considered investigational. In sex head to head comparison studies of PCA3 and PHI only season at all found the significant differences. PCA3 detected more cancer, but for the detection of significant disease defined as IHUP grade, more than, more than three plus uh, positive scores are more than 50% cancer involvement in any core PHI group superior. Also, it has suggested in their systematic review that based on moderate quality data, PHI and the 4K panel had a higher diagnostic accuracy and showed similar performance in predicting the detection of However, in the screening population of the ER species study, the use of both PCA3 and 4K panel was added to the risk calculator led to an improvement in AUC of less than 0.2. Based on the available evidence, some biomarkers could help in disseminating between aggressive and non aggressive tumors with an additional way to compare to the prognostic for parameters currently used by physicians. However, upfront multi-parametric magnetic resonance imaging is also likely to affect the utility of the mentioned biomarker. Guidelines for risk assessment of asymptomatic and recommendation to avoid unrestricted biopsies are for further risk assessment to asymptomatic men with a normal digital sexual examination and a prostate specific condition level between 2 to 10 nanograms per ml prior to performing the prostate biopsy. Use one of the following tools, the risk calculator, imaging, and additional serum or urine based test. Baseline biopsy. The need for prostate biopsy is based on PSA level and our suspicious VRE and our NH. Age, potential comorbidity, and therapeutic consequences should also be considered and discussed beforehand. The risk stratification is a potential tool for reducing unnecessary biopsy. Limited PSA elevation alone should not prompt immediate biopsy. The prostate specific antigen level should be verified after a few weeks in the same laboratory using the same assay under standardized conditions. For example, no ejaculation, no manipulation, and urine recycling. 
Infinite use of antibiotics in an asymptomatic patient in order to lower the BSH should not be undertaken. Ultrasound guided biopsy is now the standard of care. Prostate biopsy is performed by either the transrectal or transperineal approach. Cancer detection rates when performed without prior imaging with MRI are comparable between the two approaches. However, some evidence suggests reduced infection risk with the transperineal approach. Rectal disinfection with povidine or povidone iodine may be considered. Transurethral resection of the prostate should not be used as a tool for cancer detection. The role of imaging in clinical diagnosis, transrectal ultrasound and ultrasound-based technique. Grayscale transrectal ultrasound is not reliable at detecting prostate cancer in the diagnostic state of additional biopsy performed on hypoacute lesions is negative. New sonographic modalities such as sonoelastography, contrast and hair spray ultrasound or high resolution micro ultrasound has given for promising preliminary findings. Either in arm or combined in the so-called multi-parametric ultrasound. However, these techniques are still limited by lack of standardization, lack of mass scale evaluation, and unclear results in transition zone. Multi-parametric magnetic resonance imaging. Multi-parametric resonance magnetic resonance imaging performance in detecting IFT grade module to prostate cancer. Correlation with the theoretical perspective, the specimen shows that multi-parametric MRI has good sensitivity for the detection and localization of IFT grade module to cancer. This was further confirmed in patients who underwent the plate biopsy. Monthly parametric magnetic resonance imaging performance and detecting IUCB grade 1 prostate cancer. Multi parametric MRI is less sensitive in identifying IUCB grade 1 prostate cancer. It identifies less than 30% of IUCB grade 1 cancer smaller than 0.5 to be identified on radical prostate CT specimens by histopathology analysis. In series using template biopsy findings as the reference standard, multi-parametric MRI has a full sensitivity of 0.72 and a full sensitivity of 0.27 for identifying IFT grade 1 cancer. The added value of systematic and targeted biopsy. Magnetic resonance imaging targeted biopsies can be used in two different diagnostic pathways. The combined pathway in which patients with a positive multi-parametric MRI undergo combined systematic and targeted biopsy, and patients with a negative multi-parametric MRI undergo systemic biopsy. The MRI pathway in which patients with a positive multi-parametric MRI undergo only MRI targeted biopsy, and patients with a negative multi-parametric MRI are not biopsy. Many studies evaluated combined systematic and targeted biopsy in the same patients and could therefore assess the true added value of each technique. The percentage of my patients diagnosed by only one biopsy. Data from the brain meta analysis of these studies and from the MRI studies and correspond to the state by the true added value of the MRI targeted biopsy for detecting IFT that more than the cancer is higher than the rate of systematic biopsy. Systematic biopsy is an acceptable approach in case multi-parametric MRI is unrelated. Recommendation for our patients to not use multi-parametric magnetic resonance imaging as an initial screening. Adhere to private guidelines for multi-parametric MRI exhibition and interpretation and to evaluate multi-parametric MRI results in multi-parametric using metrological screening. Recommendations in biopsy
So, uh, Jalal, if you uh, if you stop for a moment and go back to uh, the slide on recommendation, yes, this one. So, you see, again, uh, we are working in a different kind of environment. Uh, we don't have the availability of a multi-parametric MRI in the whole country. Um, so, what do we have? We have only uh, an MRI, which is um, uh, less than three Tesla and that is uh, I I'm talking about the whole city of Karachi and maybe Lahore also uh, it is like I, I think uh, the the thing that we have here in in, uh, in our unit is 1.5 Tesla it's not more than that um, now the other day somebody was asking me about uh, the whole investigation um, protocol of uh, a prostatic cancer patient and uh, when I say to him um, that uh, whenever a person has got a raised PSA, we always um, try to figure out uh, w what is the kind of situation by doing biopsy first rather than MRI first. So he um, asked me that why, why shouldn't we do something called MRI first. Uh, because of one reason, it is not multi-parametric MRI and it it will not guide us to anything called targeted biopsy since we don't have that kind of a situation is still with us. Now what do we have? The, the things that we have, we are using them in the best uh, way possible for uh, the investigation and treatment and diagnosis of uh, uh, the patient in the, uh, uh, in the first instance. Uh, anybody who has got a raised PSA, uh, we always take another uh, sample of PSA if that PSA level is uh, less than 15 uh, meaning to say if it is like between 4 and uh, earlier it was 4 and 10 now it has gone on to 4 and 15 so if that is the case um, then we what we do is we um, uh, give the person a prescription of an antibiotic a short course antibiotic of 5 days and then uh, we repeat PSA but if the PSA is uh, greater than 15 nanogram per ml, we ask the person to have uh, uh, a urine culture done and uh, uh, coagulation profile and then we plan for biopsy. Um, if the person has got, as I have said earlier on, a PSA between uh, 4 and 15, then we try to give him um, a shot of antibiotic for, 15 day, uh, for 5 days and then we repeat PSA if that PSA happens to be again in the same range or is uh, above 15 then we ask the person to go for biopsy so by all means biopsy is done first so when the biopsy uh, report tells us whether it's positive or negative that's the situation if it is positive meaning to say there is some scoring there is some grading uh, which is the Gleason score and Gleason grade and it is adenocarcinoma prostate then we go to one step further and that is uh, uh, two things either we go towards uh, MRI or we go towards uh, um, towards bone scan what we do normally is we go towards bone scan now why bone scan because we want to first do something called uh, cost effective evaluation and the second thing is we want to see whether the tumor has metastasized or not if bone scan is positive then there is no need of doing MRI. So we have um, we, we have uh, um, uh, uh, say um, saved a little bit of uh, our expenses on on that kind of uh, investigation. But if the bone scan is negative, 
meaning to say there is no bony metastasis then either there is a possibility that the tumor the carcinoma is locally invasive um, now for that purpose the best uh, method of imaging is MRI then we go towards MRI if uh, the person for the uh, again on biopsy report and the biopsy report tells you that it is negative there is no adenocarcinoma of prostate there was probably prostatitis which give rise to which is giving rise to um, a raised PSA then what we do we go towards your uh, second slide after this one and that is repeat biopsy we we stay for uh, six uh, weeks or three months and within this period we um, we, we ask the patient to uh, be with us that means they have to come to the clinic again and again and then after three months or so between six weeks and three months we repeat PSA and repeat the same thing that is we repeat biopsy now why we are repeating the biopsy it is for again all those things that have been um, said in in that slide uh, you go back two slides forward Jalal Jalal uh, yes uh, no one back repeat biopsy one this one so uh, all these things are then taken into consideration and we, we uh, and these are the uh, indications so the first indication rising or and or persistently elevated PSA that is being done six weeks to three months of the previous biopsy or the previous assessment again uh, the last point in this slide is positive multi-parametric MRI funding we don't have it so uh, uh, first first thing we, we have to take possession of the whole process of uh, investigation of some focus in the prostate which might not be picked up in the first biopsy but since PSA is still on a rising trend then this case has to be looked again and again we don't just ask the patient to get off the radar right so if, if that is the kind of a strategy in a clinic which you are running for the purpose of uh, dealing with lower unit tract symptoms and then going on towards on one hand uh, BPH and on the other hand carcinoma prostate then and only then you will be able to pick up those cases in your population that is not a screened population mind you whatever the European guidelines are saying whatever the European guidelines are saying and they are suggesting is for a population that has been screened that has been screened if not totally maybe partially but up to 70 percent of them if they have got their own social security and uh, insurance in america they are the screened population because this is something which is mandatory so ours is a, an unscreened population so our job is a little different from theirs we have to make adjustment within the same guideline again the same concept that guidelines are to guide us they are not for us to put patients into them right yes please proceed
Yes, Jal Jalal. Uh, yes, uh, just just uh, just a minute. Just to be with uh, everyone. Um, maybe a few days back, I have posted one uh, specimen of a report uh, of a biopsy report um, uh, to your um, WhatsApp group. Uh, so, if uh, anybody has it, uh, I have it. So, I, I can just read it through, or you can just read on your mobile telephones also what is the importance of all these things for instance the number of cores taken from any site then the site from which it is being taken from uh, the apex base the middle portion uh, at which point the lateral point or the medial point of uh, the apex base or the medial portion or the middle portion the second thing is how much is the length of that uh, uh, that specimen because as I have told you earlier it's a it's a hollow needle uh, it goes into and it comes out taking the tissue with it so maybe sometimes it goes a little superficial sometimes it goes a little deeper depending upon um, whether you have uh, put your needle directly in contact with the prostate or you're firing from a distance so if you are or maybe you are firing 
after you have pierced through the capsule and you are just in the middle of prostate and then you fire then it has got another kind of a, of a length of the same specimen so it takes a core of tissue which has got a caliber in diameter and that is like the gauge of the needle maybe it's a 16 gauge needle then it is a 16 uh, it, it's a 16 millimeters of uh, diameter it's an 18 gauge needle and it is 18 millimeters of diameter in the cross section but length wise it depends as I have told you the point at which you are actually firing the needle um, whether it is transperineal or whether it is a transrectal route that you have uh, taken all these things are important and all these things have to be reported because the tissue that you are actually giving to the histopathologist then it is up to the histopathologist to uh, not only give you a report whether it's a positive biopsy or negative biopsy but he has to and this is known as qualification or uh, the quality of your specimen the other thing is the quantification and on the level of quantification it has to be um, written down how much is the percentage of tissue involved by the tumor so it is not as simple as having just a positive biopsy or a negative biopsy it has to be looked into in something in details otherwise uh, we will not be able to judge and to interpret and to predict the kind of situation that we will have or we will want um, in days to come for instance uh, the tumor burden for instance so maybe it's a small focus one centimeter focus of the prostate on right or left side of the prostate which has been involved with the malignancy what we are more interested is in is how much is the whole prostate involved so what's the percentage we cannot just have it by means of uh, repeated samples um, from the base to the apex we can have like 12 samples or 12 uh, 12 core uh, of um, uh, biopsy specimen or we can have maybe more than that we can have 24 or 25 or whatever but again there are certain points which will be missing between those points of which we have gone into meaning to say if you have taken two uh, biopsies from the base then there is always an intervening area which is missed so how much uh, maybe that is the area which is actually involved by the tumor so if you don't have multi-parametric MRI and you if you don't have any guide uh, with which you can guide your needle to go into an area which is actually an, an abnormal area then you are actually doing a random sampling a random biopsy and with a kind of randomization of biopsy if you want to quantify it will be difficult so uh, I don't know whether I am making myself clear or not but it is rather too difficult for anybody to judge unless and until all these percentages and lengths of biopsy specimen are measured uh, to date now uh, what the report in our unit is they are only telling you the scores the grades and the maybe number of specimens that that are actually involved in percentage what they are not telling you are certain things for instance they are not telling you whether it is from the base apex or mid the middle portion is it from the periphery or is it from the uh, from the median plane or median line uh, close to the median line or uh, what is the kind of uh, um, tumor burden you can always infer indirectly but uh, there are certain things which are again missing in our reports so we, we have to um, improve upon uh, upon them also yes please
How much is left, Jalal? How much is left? Okay. Right. Thank you very much. It was a very, very good presentation and uh, a thought-provoking presentation in, in the sense that it can give you a lot of food for thought to improve uh, the current situation of uh, diagnostics and, um, ther uh, and therapeutics in, in the context of prostate cancer. Just uh, your concluding slide, if you put on the concluding slide. Slide number 125. Yes, this one. You see, uh, again, uh, this is on a, uh, since we are dealing with a European guideline, so they have got their own life expectancies. Now, uh, uh, earlier in one of the slides, it was mentioned that uh, if you want to take PSA as a screening tool, you should have, uh, for instance, uh, greater than 15 years of uh, life expectancy in order to act upon it. The same goes here. If you have got a life expectancy of 10 years, then it is it can be regarded as a threshold for benefit of local treatment. Now, for us in Pakistan, what is the life expectancy? If it is like 72 years or 73 years, uh, if we consider the male population, then for a person like me who is like 55 years of age, I should not be having it anything because I have got very close only 15 years left for 70 years uh, cut off line. So I shouldn't be 
uh, having any PSA test done. So there is nothing for me at least. This is not the case. The case is uh, they, they can do it because they have got their own actuarial uh, assessments and uh, they have got a life expectancy of more than 80 years now. So they can all have anything done between eight, 50 and 80 years. So they have got 30 years to, to play with. Now if we uh, talk about our condition, we don't have that kind of a situation. So either uh, we, we, we just don't address this problem at all, we just don't do anything or we do something on a different level. For instance, why I'm telling you from a different level is you always see your patient patient by patient. So you're, you, you should not be thinking of something in these terms of 10 years or 15 years. It should rather be the, uh, the activity of the patient. How active is your patient? How, uh, how is the well-being, the status, uh, the health status of that patient? So th that is the kind of guide which can always uh, make you understandable and also you can address the problem at your hand. Otherwise, if you want to put your patients within these guidelines, there will be very little that the patient can have at least from, uh, from the aspect of prostate cancer. right? So we will talk about these things later also. But again, congratulations for a very good um, presentation. Maybe we would like to have certain presentations from all the group to be presented here in SIUT in front of the whole crowd of uh, residents uh, once you come back and, and join us. Uh, so uh, I'll, I'll be asking you to present yourself, uh, maybe two of your, uh, one of your uh, presentation out of, out of two of your presentations that you have done on uh, on this platform online platform so thank you